Okay, today I wanted to delve a little bit deeper into the testing of my uh, Hewlett Packard uh, 5245L uh, electronic counter. Uh, we're looking at the rear of the unit right now, uh, and this is the output for the frequency standard, uh, which is derived from a 1 megahertz crystal oscillator inside a shielded compartment uh, with, actual, with an actual heating element around it. Uh, it's, it's got an oven, it's isolated from the rest of the unit thermally and it uh, maintains, uh, attempts to maintain a constant temperature uh, for stability of the crystal oscillator. I guess it's like a TCXO. Um, of course it also has uh, the ability to scale frequency in decade steps and this is a scalar output which I'm not using right now and I have the switch set for uh, the frequency standard output and the standard frequency at 10 megahertz. Let's see if you can see. It's variable all the way down to 1 hertz. Of course it gets less accurate as you go up in frequency. So uh, let's, uh, knowing all this, let's go ahead and plug into my cheap frequency counter here. Give that a second. And we see, uh, if I'm thinking correctly, this is about, this is reading at least about 3.3, 3.4 parts per million off. But I don't really trust the Electrotech as I've stated before. I'm sure that it's out of calibration. I think I'm the, at least the third owner of this thing. And it probably wasn't too great uh, out of the box. But uh, we've got that hooked directly to the output on the back of the Hewlett Packard. Now let's go ahead and switch down to the 1 meg setting. Okay, that's better. We're only 4 hertz off here. Hundred kilohertz. We're showing one hertz of uh, inaccuracy according to the Electrotech, which is this is probably just uh, indicative of the Electrotech um, uh, becoming more accurate uh, with lower frequency. I, I, I'm, I still don't necessarily. I'm not convinced that this is telling me anything whatsoever about the stability of the of the uh, frequency standard that is internal to the Hewlett Packard. Let's go down to. 10 kilohertz. Now the Electrotech is, they were still showing some inaccuracy. Drop to 1K. Hmm. 100 hertz. Hmm. We're not getting anything for some reason on the... I can't get focus on that. Okay. 10 hertz setting, we're not getting anything. Let's go ahead and cut it down to one. Okay, well that's probably due to the fact that I don't have uh, enough amplitude at that frequency. Let's boost it up to, uh, boost the level up to 10 volts RMS. Go back to the 10 hertz setting. Well, I guess my guess was wrong on that, but I know for a fact that this is not the most sensitive of frequency counters. Okay, before spending any more time on that, now going back to the 10 mag setting, uh, we're showing 36 hertz uh, discrepancy between the two. Now, 
I want to show one other neat thing we have here. If I go to, let me try to focus. Focus is probably essential for this part. There we go. Now we flip to check. 10 megahertz. 10 seconds per division. Of course, now I can't show the one, but shows all the way down to a tenth of a hertz. Now, of course, it thinks it's right, so this doesn't really tell me anything as far as uh, the internal reference. Interesting. I've never noticed on the... Uh, .1 second interval. I've never noticed this. This is a discrepancy I haven't seen before. Or I skipped over it but I wonder if it has anything to do with the, the testing I'm doing simultaneously back here now I noticed that we walked up a couple Hertz um, but it could be well, I'm shaking the camera here but that could be due to uh, temperature climbing on either one of the counters so let's take this off for a moment Just take it off here. Although this might introduce uh, some things, so we'll just take that jumper out completely. And it's still here. Interesting. Press reset. So that could be a time base glitch I'm seeing. I don't know. But it's the first time I've seen that, so we're seeing it here on video. And I've been reading my uh, manual for the time interval unit and it looks like it'll be something that is going to be really educational when my scope arrives which is supposed to be today so um, I'm getting a new scope today it'll be my second Tektronix and it's a uh, 2465A 4 channel with uh, uh, 350 megahertz bandwidth so I'll be able to see uh, oscillations that I've never seen with any of my other scopes in the past. So, anyway, this is just the beginning of the uh, series of 5245L videos, I'm sure, as well as the 5262A, which uh, we'll be getting some use soon if it works. 73.